to record. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we want to welcome everyone to this open access informational this evening. We don't know how you found out about us, but we're so glad that you did. And if you were wondering what exactly is this all about, we hope that this session will help you to better understand that uh, Jeff Monge and I, and we'll talk a little bit about this going forward, but Jeff Monge and I, uh, a couple of years ago, working in the community development finance industry, had this brainchild of helping to bring more Black and Latinx professionals into the community development space. We are professionals in this industry. We've spent a career in this industry. We think it's a very rewarding career, but we also think that the, that the industry could do a better job if we looked more like, we were more represented of the communities that we're working in, mostly low-income areas, lots of Black and Brown communities. And so we put together this, fellowship program that we're going to explain to you this evening. We're going to talk to you, tell you how it works. And at the end of it, we're going to let you know what you can do to apply. So starting off, um, I think we're going to have Mr. Lamont Blackstone from our partnership with Project REAP talk to us about Project REAP, um, how they are partnering with open access, and anything else you want to share, Lamont. So I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Gina. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lamont Blackstone, as Gina mentioned, and I serve as the board chair of Project REAP, which is an acronym for the Real Estate Associate Program. I also serve as acting executive director of that organization. And Project REAP is one of the leading initiatives uh, advancing diversity, equity, and inclusion in the commercial real estate uh, industry. And we've been doing that for well over 23 years. And we've been successful in advancing the needle, moving the needle somewhat with regards to uh, minorities participating in the commercial real estate industry. Now, if you look at the commercial real estate industry, it often has an overlap with economic development and the community development sector. I, perhaps more than most commercial real estate professionals, with the exception of Jeff Mohey and Gina, can appreciate that because in a prior incarnation, I was involved in the development of several inner city shopping centers ranging from New York City all the way to South Los Angeles. And in all of those instances, there was some form of economic development capital that was necessary, that was critical in order to launch and execute those projects. So because of that, when the uh, brainchilds and brain children of open access approached me about this collaboration between open access and Project REAP, it registered with me because uh, that particular sector likewise suffers from a deficit of talent, multicultural talent uh, in those ranks. So what Project REAP is doing is basically providing some administrative infrastructure to the Open Access Committee. We did it previously for the inaugural launch and we're delighted to be able to do it again. And we hope that you'll find this evening's seminar informative. Now I will take pains to excuse myself because even as we speak, Project REAP is operating one of its academies this evening. So I've been called upon to do double duty, but I'm obviously gonna be leaving you in great hands with Gina, with Jeff, and with the illustrious Claudia Diaz. That's right. Lamont, thank you so much. Your partnership is everything for us um, with, with Project REAP. Um, so as, as Lamont mentioned, this is our second round for, for this um, initiative that Jeff and I launched with Claudia Diaz. We could not do any of what we do without, without her support. Um, and in the first go round, we um, were able to um, provide fellowships to 24 individuals. 
Um, one of those individuals was generous enough to put together a video of her motivations and interest in getting into this industry. And so next, Claudia, if you could share the video. I was born and raised in San Diego, California, and I graduated from UC Berkeley in December of 2019. I wanted to go into community development because people's well-being matters to me. After graduating, I wanted to look for a role where I could learn and grow as an individual while simultaneously making a positive impact on the world, and community development checked all my boxes. I think that everyone deserves the right to live a quality life. And the work that people are doing in this space, whether it be the development of a healthcare center or bringing a grocery store to a food desert or aiding in just that, and I'm proud to be a part of it. Community development industry could have serious and lasting impacts on people's overall standard of living by helping everyone have access to basic needs like education, food, housing, and healthcare. The potential for this industry are endless. Hi. Thank you, Claudia. So uh, Brianne was a, a first time uh, participant and she is now working with Monghe Capital in the industry. Uh, she's an example of the types of uh, talent that we have seen in this program. You're also later going to hear from a panel with, you're going to hear from a panel of individuals who were just like Brianne, a part of our first cohort, who are going to share some of their experiences. But let me backtrack a little bit and introduce myself. Um, my name is Gina Nesbeth. I am a 25 year career employee at Citibank. I manage Citibank's new markets tax credit program and a private equity portfolio that's dedicated to community related investments. Um, it is through that work uh, over the last some odd years that I started to work more deeply in the community and post George Floyd's murder have been placed on a special assignment with a minority institution, a minority, uh, a black owned bank called uh, Unity Bank in Houston, Texas. Um, so that's what I've been doing in the industry. I'm an investor, uh, a lender, a part of the industry that's providing finance to real estate projects and operating businesses. And I'd like to now introduce and give Jeff an opportunity to introduce himself, um, my, my co-founder in this effort and, and partner in crime, Jeff Monghe. You're on mute, Jeff. Now I really did it right. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Gina. Uh, so so uh, my name is Jeff Monghe, uh, born and raised in the Bronx, um, grew up in a highly distressed census tract, as, as they say in the industry, um, and uh, got into community development initially uh, with a small not-for-profit in, uh, in, in East Harlem and went into a quasi-government uh, organization called the Upper Manhattan Empowerment Zone in Harlem uh, and, and really found an opportunity to really try to make a difference in, in the community uh, and had an opportunity to segue that to private equity. I was at a private equity firm for 10 years. We raised about a half a billion dollars in equity and invested into uh, only low income communities, grocery anchor shopping centers, government lease, uh, nonprofit uh, lease office buildings for the most part. Um, in the last 12 years, I segued and, and created my own uh, advisory company focused on uh, uh, real estate and, uh, and um, community development finance work. And we've been working nationally um, and um, probably did about going up to about $2 billion worth of, of projects uh, throughout, throughout the nation. Um, this is a, a passion of mine. So it's, it's, it's beyond uh, a job or you know, be able to uh, cash a check is, is really an effort to uh, do good and do well, which I, I think is a, a huge blessing. Great, that's wonderful. <clears throat> so Claudia, guide us to what's next. Are we showing the video? Okay, so as an example, Jeff's gonna uh, come back right after and give us you an, a, give an example of a lot of the projects that he's worked on, the types of uh, deals that he's done. Um, as you know, in community development finance, there are any number of 
asset classes um, in the in the real estate space that we we fund. Um, there are also operating businesses, small businesses that we lend to all around creating benefit for the local residents that live in these communities. And what's coming up next is an example of a, it's one project that I worked on and financed uh, in Los Angeles. This is um, MLK Hospital. Um, and Claudia, if you can roll the tape. We're all in this together through the sick and thin. South LA is very medically underserved. When the old hospital closed, people in the community lived with untreated health problems for years. So with the county's help, we've built a new hospital from the ground up. And having City as an early investor worked as a signal to others to invest. With City's help, we built a wonderful maternity ward and we were able to purchase an MRI machine. We made it possible for the people who live here to lead healthier lives, and that's invaluable. When the ones we love need the best of us, we'll find each other there. Thank you, Claudia, for that. Um, so that, again, this you know we get few opportunities in our career to be a part of something that's bigger than ourselves. And I think for those of us in community development finance, um, and I think I speak for Jeff as well, these projects that we fund are they're not just investments that we're making. They are very personal. They're passion. We're passionate about them. They represent people that we know and understand, um, and they are changing lives. Um, the next slide is going to be a, a bit of a highlight. Oh, yes, thank you. So I'm, I'm going to kick it back over to Jeff, uh, who can talk about some of the projects that he's worked on. Yeah, and I'm going to really talk about um, kind of higher level, and Gina spoke a little bit about this as it pertains to the diversity of community development finance. Um, you know, so you know, we, obviously we just saw a, a medical uh, health center uh, or hospital um, that's a, a big focus in, in the community development uh, space. Affordable housing, obviously, is another uh, a focus. You know, while the, the affordable housing industry is probably what a lot of folks are familiar with, um, what a lot of people are not familiar with is really the, the services uh, that are needed and the job creation opportunities that are needed for the low income communities, which is, uh, you know, things like new market tax credits. Uh, things like uh, state programs that are out there and the like. So uh, on the left-hand side, for instance, this is the, the Schomburg Center. It's actually a deal that Gina and I worked on together in, in Harlem. So this is a, a, a library uh, and cultural center in, in, in Harlem. On the top side, top, side uh, top slide, you have a hotel. This is an Indigo Hotel deal that we worked on in downtown Newark. So that was a combination of historic tax credits. That was a combination of tax abatements from the city as well as federal tax credits. Um, on the bottom uh, slide, we have retail. So retail is a big, a big uh, uh, push in, in community development finance because it uh, supports small businesses. It also supports uh, things like grocery stores that brings fresh food uh, to communities. Uh, another thing that we is a big focus in the community uh, development finance world is community facilities. So, uh, for instance, uh, there was a deal that we worked on the Boys and Girls Club of, of Puerto Rico. So, how awesome is this? I, I'm Puerto Rican um, of descent. After Hurricane Maria came and devastated the island, uh, you know, I felt at a loss. I didn't want to just provide a check, but I actually had a skill set. I could actually go and find out how I could do more than that. So the Boys and Girls Club uh, is, a, is a big uh, uh, you know, uh, service provider on the island. So I made that connection, the Boys and Girls Club through the Boys and Girls Club of America. And we were able to help them with some working capital to be able to bridge financing that, that still hasn't 100% come to the island after the devastation of, of, of Hurricane uh, 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 Maria. And then there's also lastly, what, what, I'll, what I'll mention is you know, the idea that, that um, you know, math, math, I would say to my kids, math is, is king and queen, right? So if you understand the numbers, um, if you know, that is the biggest uh, gap 
in, in I think as far as in, in, in low income community revitalization is how do you understand to, how to build something, make it feasible and bring in various components of capital, whether it's public or private capital to the table to be able to execute on, on transactions. What we do is extremely powerful because without this industry, the, the, the ability to gap those, uh, those differences in feasibility wouldn't be possible in low income communities. Thank you, Jeff. Um, and so what Jeff um, mentioned briefly, uh, but the project on the bottom, while that side was uh, retail, on the opposite side, on the opposite, opposite side of that building, the first part, the major part of the street um, was a mixed use project that we did. And so I just wanna bring that up to say, while Jeff and I have focused primarily on new markets and commercial types of real estate, affordable housing is a huge part of community development finance. Um, it was not necessarily in our background in a, in a meaningful way, in a big way, but, but it will be a part of this program. And so for those people who might have an interest in affordable housing, um, that is another leg to the stool of, uh, of community development finance. So if we now move to the next slide, Claudia, um, this is a little bit more detail about the industry generally and the roles and the and the functions that exist in this industry. Now, this might be very um, no, much known to many people on the call, but we just want to make sure people understand um, there are many, many, many roles and jobs and career paths uh, in community development finance. Uh, I am an investor. Uh, currently, um, but there's everything from the investor to both nonprofit and for-profit intermediaries in many, many, many ways. In the new market space, there are these things called CDEs or community development entities that apply for the tax credit, a federal tax credit each year to, to be able to fund these projects. There are local nonprofits who are very much a part of the affordable housing developments. Um, there are the project sponsors themselves. These are maybe like the YMCA uh, or th that, that Jeff mentioned. Um, they are themselves the sponsor of the project. They might not know a lot about development or real estate development, but they know that they need to do more, offer more products and services to their community. Uh, developers, consultants, lawyers and accountants, syndicators, any number of roles um, that we are looking for to see more representation of people like the folks who are on this call this evening in our industry. Um, and Jeff, if I could hand it back over to you to talk about the functions, um, various functions in, in the industry. Yes, yeah, so, so, and uh, and I just got, uh, someone just asked me a question in the chat, um, uh, you know, particularly about my background, um, but, you know, so, so, so if you look at the roles, you know, I'm just going to put this in, in the form you know, of a deal. If you have a deal, like, you know, we're an advisor uh, on, on a large part. So if, if a developer comes, you know, comes to us and has a gap in finance and to try, try to create feasibility, we would go to an investor uh, like, like a Gina to be able to help be able to, uh, bring private uh, sector products to the table. Um, and then maybe go to a nonprofit or an intermediary to be able to bring subsidies that may be able uh, uh, to help gap some of those, those, uh, th those uh, th that feasibility. But through that whole process, you are gonna have the business development side, right? So I go and I find that deal that's looking for, for that, that need, the underwriting. I take that deal, do some underwriting, try to figure out what the, what the gap is, for feasibility, and then find the products impact analysis, you know, so the nonprofit that's offering or, or the government entity that may be offering the subsidy, they want to make sure that there's impact for the low income community. So there are folks that do that. Obviously legal, the process to be able to close the deal. After you close the deal, there's pro a program compliance. So you say you're going to create 50 jobs. Did you really create 50 jobs and, and offering reports related to that? Service and asset management. If, you, if someone lent you money, if there's an equity investment there, you need to be able to, to, to uh, obviously receive that principal and interest and be able to make sure that it's a feasible project. And then you know the reporting that, that, that I already talked about before. And then at the end of the day, project development, project development could be a description of you know, putting together the deal that, that you're gonna end up uh, developing and financing one day. Great. 
Um, and so um, we're, we're sort of leading the witness a little bit here, but the fellowship program itself, uh, we are very blessed to have had, uh, to have sponsors who represent many parts of this industry. And uh, as you will learn a little bit more as we go forward, but there'll be fellowship opportunities from individuals and organizations that span the industry. The question for the folks on the call is to kind of figure out, do you know where you might want to fit in the industry? And, and might this program be a fit for you to learn more about how to get in, what you need to know, uh, and, and mentoring opportunities therein? So if we go to the next slide. So th this is, what is the fellowship? Um, what does it look like and what does it do? So, so as I mentioned at the top, you know, Jeff and I were very, very passionate about increasing the representation of Black and Latinx professionals in the community development industry. Um, the way that we design, the way that we think is the most successful, and we had a tremendous success with round one, was it's a three-legged stool. The first is industry training. This is uh, classroom training. We did it all virtual. La the entire program was virtual last year, um, but there's a, a gold standard accounting firm, Novogratic, that was a generous sponsor of ours who provided 10 hours of, of free training in the industry, classroom type instruction online. And then there's the a paid internship um, component. Uh, we were very blessed to have sponsors who were offering paid internships, which is a total of uh, 160 hours over a three month period of time um, for fellows, our fellows to come and figuratively last go round, sit in their organizations to work on projects, to be mentored by others, to have job assignments, um, but to really roll up their sleeves and to better understand the business. Um, as Jeff mentioned, you know, if, the, if you don't know the math, if you don't know the boxes and the arrows in our industry, you're really kind of tapped out. So this was an opportunity for people to learn. Um, and then the third component was mentoring. And that was as important as the other two. We were very fortunate as well to have numbers of our colleagues in our industry lend their time uh, to open up their Rolodex, uh, for those people who know what a Rolodex is, but to open up their network and to share um, their, their people that they know and help, help, help people have conversations with people to better learn uh, about the industry and opportunities that are in the industry. And so at the end of a three month period of time, um, we expect all of our fellows will receive a certificate of training completion from Novogratic, uh, who is very generous again, gonna be offering up um, their, their sponsorship for a second go round. Our fellows we expect would have completed 160 hours of paid fellow, fellowship, internship opportunities. And we would love to be able to say that we placed fellows in roles, whether those be in organizations or helping them to grow their own organizations, whatever, whatever they deem as success, that is the metrics, that, those are the metrics that we would be looking to, to measure um, our, our, our initiative by. Um, we can share an impact report that we put together for the first cohort uh, last year, which was again, you know, really, really, really successful, um, something we're really proud of. And so we're really hoping to have the same type of impacts this go round. Jeff, did I mention, miss anything? Uh, are, are we gonna, cause I, you just saw a question in the chat. Um, are, are we gonna talk about uh, the potential, uh, as, as it pertains to the process? Or should we talk about that now? Or is that something that we'll talk about after? I think um, the process for the application, uh, well, so, so when you put together the application as it pertains, you know, so you, folks, so I'll, I'll just say it now, maybe I'll be ahead of it. So you, you, when you put together your application, there's going to be a, a, a list of, of, of uh, companies or organizations that are looking to sponsor fellows for their, their virtual or in-person, whatever ends up being the case. Now, how does that come about? The sponsors are actually going to get everybody's uh, resumes. They're going to select people that they want to interview directly. Gina and I, Claudia, we're not matchmaking. They're actually going to be reviewing everybody's application and their resume. They will be reaching out on their own accord to be able to set up discussions, interviews. At the end of the day, it's between 
the fellow, the potential fellow and, and that organization, whether it's gonna be virtual, whether it's gonna be in person, a combination of the two, what kind of hours are you going to be keeping and the like, and 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 also the the, the scope of of, of the uh, of the fellowship, right? Um, and I do want to address. There are some other questions that I think would be really pertinent here. Um, what kind of backgrounds are the candidates likely to come from? A very wide range. We receive the minimum qualifications is a four qualifications are four year uh, education, a four year degree, and two years of work experience. We saw folks who fit that minimum, and we saw people who were lawyers and PhDs and MBAs, um, mid-career, late career. Our thesis is if we keep bringing people only in at the ground level, um, we will continue to have the same results that corporate America has seen over and over again with their DEI efforts. We really want to be able to interject people in our industry in multiple levels of the industry. So if you have an interest, this is an opportunity to transition, to pivot um, into an industry that you may be passionate about. And as Jeff mentioned, last year, the, fir the first cohort was all virtual because of COVID. This year, we expect most of them will be, but the fellowship, the internship provider will be the one who will decide whether or not they want an individual, a fellow coming into their office every day, or if they can uh, house a, a virtual fellow. Um, so with that, um, and would you be able to work? Uh, many of our fellows did work. You're gonna hear from some of the fellows, many of them did work and they were able to work to coordinate with their uh, internship provider uh, off hours or evenings. It really depended on that match. Um, so with that, um, Claudia, I think you're up next. Um, welcome everyone. I'm Claudia Diaz. I'm the program consultant for open access. And I had the amazing opportunity to work with all of these amazing fellows um, with the first inaugural cohort. And now they're joining us here today to speak a little bit about their experience and to share um, what they're doing now. Welcome you, um, all of you guys. And so why don't we go ahead and get started with some brief introductions. Uh, in one minute, if you could please tell us about your background and we'll go ahead and go al along with the slide. Um, so Brienne. Hi everybody, welcome. Um, you all got to see my amazing video, so I won't spend too long on my introduction, but my name is Brianne Lund. I graduated from UC Berkeley in December of 2019, and I've been working with Monhoy Capital Advisors for about a year and a half now. So really excited to be here and talk to you all today. Is Chima up next? No. Okay, uh, so I didn't know if we were going to prompt each other or just go after everyone was done. Hi, my name is Shima Joseph. It says that I'm a senior relationship manager at, at Bank of America, and that's my day job, but my passion is um, uh, development. I am an established professional, Brooklyn born. I'm an alpha man. I got my MBA from Chicago Booth, and I really wanted to get into real estate development, especially commercial real estate development. So I participated in Project REAP. I was an open access fellow, part of the inaugural class. I'm hoping that I can um, uh, really continue to build on the success that we had here. And one of the things to me that was really eye-opening about this process was not only getting to work with um, uh, Jeff at Monhe Capital and uh, working on just amazing real live deals, but also have an opportunity last weekend to be in Austin for the New Market Tax Credit Conference and really seeing that without us, there was really a dearth of minority professionals there and really wanted to make a change. So um, it was fun and uh, I'm happy to serve on this panel today. Hello everyone, my name is Ono Yubatine. Um, I am a Morehouse graduate, uh, University of Miami MBA. Have been working in real estate development for about six years, two years in the LIHTC space. Um, most recently was at Mercy Housing, uh, one of the bigger nonprofit LIHTC developers in the United States and just recently transitioned to an underwriter role at PNC Bank in their tax credit solutions. Um, department uh, specifically focused on uh, 
low income housing tax credit syndication. Hello, everyone. I'm Jashar Hartley, I'm Chicago native, also a Purdue University alum and a Northern Illinois University alum as well for grad school. Um, also an Omega man. Um, definitely had to give a shout out uh, since Chima threw that out there. Um, but also, I am an investor and developer here in Chicago and in Northwest Indiana. Um, primarily, we have focused in the residential um, multifamily and single family space. Um, last year, expanded into mobile home investing. Um, but also recently, and as a part of this open access fellowship, um, I recently had the opportunity to join a CDFI. If you're unfamiliar, that's a community development financial institution um, by the name of Sinair, in which I work with their asset management team as a financial analyst. So definitely glad to be here and look forward to hopefully adding value and answering any questions you all might have. Hi everyone, my name is Desiree Thomas. My background is actually in banking. I um, actually worked at JP Morgan for about 10 years in their financial institutions group. And, you know, after covering banks in the Southeast market and working in low income communities, I developed a passion for working in community development. So I completed the um, project REIT program and I worked for the city of New York uh, doing affordable housing development uh, for a couple of years and heard about the open access program, applied to it. And it's been, it's actually changed my life significantly because now I'm working for True Fund Financial Services. I'm responsible for all of their asset management and compliance for all of the projects that they complete. Um, and I've worked on, when I actually started the internship, I actually jumped right in and started working with them. And it just feels as if I've been there forever. Um, my background, um, I have an MBA from the Wharton School and I am so happy to be able to see all of you. And it's an excellent program and love to go into more details with you. Desiree, as you all can see, we're accompanied by an amazing um, Open Access alumni panel. And so for the first questions goes to Chima, and it is, why did you choose to apply to open access? Well, again, for me, it was really around how do I change careers? And one thing that you want to do when you have, when you change careers, you want to, you know, gain technical knowledge. But more than that, you want to understand who the players are in the market. This program hit on both accounts. I did the Novogratic training. I learned about LIHTC and the 4% program. And then I took the, the new market tax credit modules, both the basic and advanced, which everyone's going to have to do. And the fun thing about the um, program is that I worked with Jeff Monhe and it was you know, a tough time because I was really busy at work and I had a baby during um, the internship period. Jeff was really kind. And uh, we worked on a project where we looked at mixed use. So I was learning about light tech. I was learning about um, uh, new market tax credits and how they work together. And now I'm working with a company called Brisa Builders Development Corp. And I'm working on a mixed use development. So the program did exactly what it said it was going to do. It was you know, rigorous. I learned a lot. And just like everybody else here, it's really helped jumpstart my career change. For sharing, Chima. Um, on a similar transition, um, this question goes for Brianne. How was the program helpful to you? I feel like the program was helpful in a lot of different regards, but I think the biggest one was definitely exposure to the field. I had no idea that community development finance was out there. And like I said in my video earlier, it really checked all the boxes of where I wanted to be. And I got to learn about, as Chima said, all the different players, got to do the 10 hour Novogratic training. And I got to network with all these amazing individuals who are at different stages in their careers in different parts of real estate and really learn from everyone. So I, I feel like exposure was definitely the key helpful aspect of this program for me. Oh no, same question to you. How was this program helpful to you and, and your career? Uh, it's been amazing for me. Um, 
I've been working in development for a while and definitely wanted to make a change. And, you know, um, this new job title that I have, I give credit to this program first and foremost um, through my fellowship at PNC Bank. Um, at the at PNC Bank, you know, not only did it give me great exposure, but, you, you know, as you guys, you know, start to matriculate through this program and, you know, school, whatever you may do in the future, the network is key, um, not only with, you know, some of these panelists here, but also within a behemoth like PNC Bank. Uh, they did a really good job of just introducing me to people, not only in new market tax credits, um, the light tech group, historic tax credits, um, even some of the other just um, banking groups in general, and even some of their third party consultants that could give me a more, I guess you could say detailed breadth of knowledge on how certain aspects of new market tax credits, historic tax credits and light tech work. So just very helpful in, in general to, for that exposure. So it sounds like exposure is a major benefit of open access. And it sounds like uh, all of y'all were able to level up because of your career because of that. Uh, Desiree, you also had a very successful transition with True Fund. You were able to land um, a permanent role there after your fellowship. Can you tell us a little bit about that and um, who would you recommend to apply to Open Access? So, um, you know, I was so fortunate to ha get the um, fellowship with True Fund. I don't know if anyone knows anything about True Fund, but True Fund is a large CDFI and, you know, they do quite a number of new market tax credit transactions. So I was able to get hands-on experience, even though I went through the Novogratic training, you know, that's an online training, but just getting a chance to get your feet wet and do the work on a day in and day out basis really gave me an exposure to new market tax credit, which by the way, is something that I had no idea about. Um, I worked for the city of New York in affordable housing. So we did a lot of light tech projects, but nothing by way of new market tax credit. So it was totally new to me. And it just gave me an insight into community development finance. And when you look at the industry, it really lacks diversity. Um, even when you go through the training, you look at all of the organizations that are out there, there's not you know, too many diverse candidates that are in this field. So just getting the opportunity to join an industry that lacks diversity and know that I'm making a difference um, while working at True Fund, because now I'm getting exposure to working with consultants and getting exposure also, even though I'm doing asset management and compliance for the organization, that's the role that I'm doing a full-time basis with True Fund. I'm also getting the opportunity to work on the business development side. So that's kind of broad exposure for someone that just kind of went through a fellowship program for 10 weeks. So it's a great experience. Um, and, you know, I would say that anyone that's interested in community development finance need to apply for this program. It doesn't matter if, um, if you, you know, you say, oh, well, I don't really want to work in new market tax credit. If you want to work in any realm of community development, I will say it's a good skill to know and to have um, and to learn about the new market tax credit financing, because, you know, you can be on the investor side, as Gina talked about, you can also be a developer, a commercial real estate developer, you know, just knowing about that. You can use new market tax credit for your project, depending on what type of development you're looking to do. So I would encourage anyone to apply for the program. Um, I don't know, you know, it doesn't matter what field you're in now, but um, it can open so many doors for you because you can also work for a traditional bank. Um, you know, doing new market tax credits. So I would definitely say and encourage everyone that's on this call to apply and, you know, get your feet wet, get the internship, and then you can decide from there if this is something for you. But I can, I can almost be, I can't guarantee it, but I can say with certainty that once you get the opportunity to work in new market tax credit, it's a field that you would want to stay in, especially you heard from my colleagues that also went through the program. Um, they're very excited about, you know, the exposure and what they've been able to do. Thank you, Desiree, for sharing. Uh, as you all know, this uh, last year was our first cohort. So all of the alumni today are actually part of our inaugural um, cohort, and they were excellent um, role models and, you know, great, um, great fellows. And 
as we ex continue to expand, we hope um, that all the fellows continue to be engaged. Uh, Jashar, how do you plan to remain engaged with the open access community? Yeah, well, um, first and foremost, I've, I've been kind of looking through the chat and to anybody that's asking the question to themselves if they should apply, if you're qualified, I would say just go ahead and apply as Desiree kind of um, spoke to as well. But staying engaged, um, I think a big part, and I've had an opportunity to see um, several individuals um, outside of my city um, from reaching out and kind of building these relationships through open access. But a lot of it is regarding um, intentionality, just being intentional with a lot of us um, on this call are a part of the black and brown community. So we have a mindset a lot of times that we're looking to improve and a lot that goes on with that, Jeff and Ms. Gina spoke to this as well as continuing to lift each other up while we're in the process of our own journey. So. Um, I like to stay engaged because you learn different things. As, as you see, not only from the panel, but everybody on this call, um, it, it's a wide variety of experience, levels of um, just competency and just skill set. So for me, just reaching out and, and staying engaged with other individuals definitely help um, for you to achieve your goals. What I've seen as a part of being with open access, yes, doors will open, but it can't stop with a conversation, just one conversation or one email. Um, and I've definitely stayed diligent and continuing to follow up and creating an actual relationship as opposed to just an ask. A lot of times we, a lot of times we have our handout, which Jeff and Gina, I appreciate it because I had my handout with this fellowship. Um, but it's definitely what do you bring um, to it as well. So definitely looking forward to staying engaged and looking to help anyone that I possibly can as well as I grow. Thank you for sharing, Jashar. Um, a little, and this question is for everyone um, to kind of wrap it up. Where are you in your journey now? Um, what key projects are you working on? And where do you want to be five years, 10 years from now? And we can go ahead and start with Brian. Just go along with the slide. Um, so currently I am a project manager with Monhe Capital Advisors. I do a variety of tasks within my role. I do underwriting, impact analysis, real estate advisory. I do financial modeling, just really the whole gambit of the field. So I really have been enjoying my role. And in the next five years, I see myself um, applying for my MBA or my master's in real estate. So that's kind of my next steps. Great. Um, for me, open access has opened uh, a number of doors. As I said, I'm working with Brisa um, uh, Builders Development Corp right now. The project that I'm working on in Brownsville is probably going to keep me for a while. And we're actually having some more strategic conversations about how we can continue to work together. But until I can really make that move, I'm going to continue to continue to cash these checks from B of A. But um, uh, in, in five years, I really would like to be on my way to creating something um, uh, like what Erica Keller has built at Brisa. Um, uh, I saw um, one of my friends who's in this list developers of color program on right now. And, and it's really about building world-class organizations that really attack the lack of diversity, because sometimes we think about the lack of diversity and we think that it matters because there should be more black and brown people in this industry, but it matters because when our voices are not in these rooms, there aren't people who can advocate for themselves. We have to be the ones to be able to advocate for those who can't speak in you know, the financial terms and need somebody to walk them through that. So um, uh, in five years, I hope to be a catalyst for that type of work. That's important, thank you for sharing. Yeah, um, for me, um, you know, I, I, I went to PNC. I think uh, Jeff talked about this a little bit at the beginning. I, I think the magic 
of development and you know putting deals together is the math so that's primarily the reason I took this role I've been more fo focused on the project execution side wouldn't say that I know all the answers but I at least know what questions to ask when it comes to that standpoint so just really trying to master the math and how the banks look at risk but I'd say five to ten years from now I definitely see myself trying to go out on my own and do development um, it's always been it's always been a lot of fun to do it but you know um, it's a lot more fun when you're doing it for for that bigger check because it is a lot of work a lot to be done so yeah um, I, I will say I, I do see a, a few people reaching out to me on LinkedIn um, definitely feel free to reach out. I think it's really big that people that, like myself that are in our mid-career that we you know talk to people there along the path that you know may not know uh, I remember when I first started like it was very hard just uh, cold calling people but anybody that's reaching out to me on LinkedIn I'll try and make time to talk to you one-on-one -on -one if, if necessary Thank you. Yes, and I'll pick up on that as well. Um, definitely feel free to reach out via any social media. Um, but I was laughing as everyone was speaking because um, I think about this time last year, I was in a completely different industry in insurance, trying to enter into commercial real estate and now working with a CDFI. So a lot of what I do is um, in the asset management and also flirting with the underwriting as well um, as Chima um, Ono and Jeff spoke to just understanding the numbers. Um, and I was actually at a conference, a BizNow conference today. Um, as prices increase, you have to understand the math to really make these deals work. Um, but five years from now, definitely working um, on my own um, at that point with a thousand units, um, speaking that into existence and really getting into the middle and lower income areas that we already focus on, um, but looking to do that not only in Chicago and Northwest Indiana, but continue that blueprint um, in other cities um, and states as well that can benefit from changing the environment and providing some economic um, opportunities as well in those communities. <laughs> as Jeff mentioned, I was a part of that really, really distressed south side of Chicago area. So just being um, looking to be a catalyst um, as I continue to excel as well. So for me, um, for someone that had no experience in new market tax credit and getting the opportunity to do a fellowship at True Fund, and now, you know, fast forward to November, I'm overseeing all of asset management and compliance for the projects. Um, but when I look at myself long term, you know, I would like to be in a position where I can encourage more um, black and brown businesses and black and brown developers to apply for new market tax credits. Um, we work with a lot of businesses that do apply for new market tax credit. And of course, you know, the projects do create jobs for people in low income communities, but I would like more projects to be done by people that look like us. Um, so I would like to be able to figure out how to reach more black and brown businesses, black and brown developers that are looking to do commercial real estate projects or you know whatever the gamut across the gamut with anyone that can qualify for new market tax credit just so that we will be able to build more um, equity in our own communities because you know one of the things that was mentioned is that if we're not in the room, right, as Chima said, decisions are being made um, you know, around what's happening in our communities, and we don't really have any um, direct say in that. So being a part of this industry and looking to be more influential in the industry so that we'll be able to make more decisions that impacts us. So that's kind of what I see for myself going forward. And feel free anyone to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'll be really happy to talk to you about the program, talk to you about my background, answer any questions that you may have. Well, thank you all for joining. You guys were an amazing panel and thank you so all so much for being engaged and for being part of our informational in getting the next round of students. So now I'll be speaking briefly about our application. So our application will open next week. Everyone who signed up to join us via Eventbrite 
you're all gonna get a nice reminder via there uh, that our application has opened. It will stay approximately open for a week and a half. And you all are welcome to, you know, fill out your application during that time and um, get that started. We only have two main requirements um, to our application. And that is that you have a four-year degree and that you have a minimum of two years of professional experience um, for that. There is no fee to participate. Um, the fellowship providers will be selecting you all. So please take a, a look at all the job descriptions that will be available at the application because you wanna to apply to a mix of one that you're interested in, but also that you're a good fit because that is how you're gonna be selected into the program. There's gonna be about 25 opportunities to join us there. And so, Best of luck, um, and, and we hope that you all join us. Gina, Jeff, do you all have any, anything to add? Yes, Claudia, I, um, this has been phenomenal. Thank thank everybody on the panel and Claudia for, for everything. Um, as Claudia mentioned, we just wanna, I just want to put a pin in the point that last year we had 24 fellows. We do expect this year to have about 25 fellows, so it is highly competitive. There's no, outside of the minimum requirement, there's no better or worse background. Um, this is really, as Jeff mentioned, a matching game. We're sort of provide, we're being the broker, if you will, between uh, an organization that is going to sponsor you as a fellow to come into their organization and learn more about the industry from from their company. Um, we're, we're that we're that in between. So we're providing the fellows, uh, the potential fellows to the internship providers and then the two of the you two parties will then decide if there's if there's a match for you um, there will be a separate interview with that organization and again those between you and that other organization will make a determination as to whether or not you are matched so we wish you all the best of luck um, we want to continue to do this work uh, we had 24 last time. We hope to have 25 this time, and we hope that in years to come, we can do it even greater class sizes. That's it for me. Jeff, any parting words? Yeah, I just want to just add to that is that when the application does come out, you're going to actually have job descriptions that are going to come, come with the organizations that are participating. So those job descriptions may, may be, uh, you know, underwriting to policy. So, you know, you really it's going to be a, a different, uh, you know, diverse uh, set of, of job descriptions that are going to be out there. So, so you know, definitely take a, take a look at that. The other thing that I want to I want to mention is is that we had folks that were selected that that were you know recently out of college to some folks that had a number of years of experience. Um, some folks that came in, uh, you know, first time boots on the ground doing this type of work. To some folks that were at at a um, at a consulting level, um, so it, it really varies. You know, uh, you know, take a shot at it. Uh, you never know what connections will, will will be made. My parting words to all of you are: apply. Don't deny yourself of the opportunity absolutely. first. Um, apply absolutely, regardless of what you think your background is. And and thank you for the fellows. You you know, you guys. One of the things that we we ask uh, of the fellows is to, you know, the reach back program, as I call it, right? So, you know, Gina and I, you know, really did, and our friends, you know, in, in the industry put a lot into it to try to reach out and, and bring bring folks up. And we asked the same of the, of the fellows and they've been doing an awesome job in, in representing uh, the program. Uh, so we really appreciate you guys. And thank Absolutely. you, Claudia, of course, you know, I don't know what we would do without Claudia. Thank you. All right, good luck, everybody.